get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive. Six, seven, eight, feeling great. We are. Hello, BYWG Tribe. Here's a quick, less than one minute review of our supplement program and book of the month for August. At the end of the podcast, I will spend a few extra minutes going into finer details. So we encourage you to listen to the end. The supplement of the month for August is our newest premium formulation, Vitamin C Boost. The 10% discount code for the month is lowercase B-O-O-S-T-10. That's Boost 10. It is case sensitive. Our book of the month is The Serpent and the Butterfly, The Seven Laws of Healing by Dr. Ben Reeves. The program of the month is from our friend, the soul-inspired girl, Dr. Laura Foster. The program is called Reclaim Your Voice. And the 15% discount code for our listeners is capital B, capital Y, capital W, capital G. Listen to the end for more specifics. All the links, discount codes, and special offers for the program, supplement, and book will be listed in the show notes in Apple Podcasts, posted on social media, in our weekly newsletter, and on our website at www.beyondyourwildestgenes.com at the Listen Now tab. Thanks for listening. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. I'm your co-host today, Dr. Mike Akinfora, and I have a fellow New Jerseyan on the phone with me, Dr. David Rendelstein. David, how are you? I am as well as could be expected, Michael. <laughs> I think that's the answer that you hear most often these days, as well as could be expected. And, and in New Jersey, I it really, it, it probably mirrors the rest of the country. It just doesn't feel like, feels like we're kind of in lockdown um, but uh, I'm thrilled to have you with us today. Let me read you uh, Dr. Rendelstein's bio, and then we're going to get into this. So Dr. David Rendelstein, DPSC, is a leading expert in weight loss field. But more than that, he's a living testimonial to the success of weight loss through lifestyle change. He has lost over 100 pounds in six months using the very system he now uses to help clients lose the weight they've been battling for years. As a trained chiropractor and the owner of Thin Tech, Dr. Rendelstein has extensive experience in helping people finally achieve lasting weight loss and an improved quality of life. Dr. Rendelstein is also the creator of the revolutionary Thin Test, which helps people to identify their barriers to losing weight and keeping it off. David, welcome to the show, my friend. Uh, you know, it, it is a thrill to be here. I think in this day and age, what's needed more than anything else is understanding uh, and just kindness. And so if we could spread a little of that around, then uh, our time together will have been successful. You know, it, it's really interesting that you said that because I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and the, o and the only way I, I see us finding our way out of this is understanding and love. Like, it, it, we, we just... Right. We really are, these are extremely unique times in the world, and we need to have a better understanding of what's going on um, in our world. And, and that's why having you on the show, you know, we talk, we see all these memes about, uh, I, I've gained, you know, I've gained uh, uh, 20 pounds during this pandemic i've gained 30 pounds mm -hmm. during this pandemic and you know the gyms are closed uh people are reaching for whatever's available and most of the time what is available is not the most healthiest of food choices that they can make right and like yourself um i as well lost over 100 pounds mine was over a much greater um, period, but can you give people a little deeper dive into your um, into your bio, into yourself, how you went about doing this, setting up um, setting up uh, thin tech, and and just talk to us about that. Sure, sure. So I'm someone who's struggled with weight loss for most of my life, uh, you know, uh, up and down many times, um, and then when I was in my late twenties. I, I thought I had everything licked, right? I became a vegetarian. I was working out. I was running in the park and doing yoga and, you know, just doing everything right. I, I lost a lot of weight. I felt terrific. And at that time, I decided to go to chiropractic school. Well, lo and behold, while I was in chiropractic school, a couple of things happened. 
One was I had a, a, a rough breakup with somebody. And the other thing was is that uh, there was all the stress of school. School is very stressful. There's always something to be studying for. You're not actually – you're not making any money. You're you know, wondering about your future and what it holds. So – those stresses kind of compile that it was kind of a precipitating event. There's, there's always a precipitating event, it seems, when somebody starts to gain weight. There's always some kind of a stressor, whether it's a divorce, a loss of job, uh, uh, having a child. Um, so that happened to me, and I started gaining weight, and I just kept gaining and gaining. Um, and then I tried a lot of things, Michael. I, I tried everything from Brazilian jiu-jitsu to uh, obviously Weight Watchers, which, which apparently uh, everyone has to do. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, personal trainer. I mean, I just tried a lot of things, and it wasn't happening, and it was really frustrated. And, you know, when you combine that, when you combine the frustration and the discouragement with, you know, being in basically a sugar-induced fog, uh, all of a sudden life is not life anymore. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I was something of a, a zombie, essentially, <laughs> Uh, and one day, fortunately, I was at a seminar and I met a couple of guys who I, who I had known and they lost a lot of weight. They told me about this program. I did it. I lost a hundred pounds. I had my sister do it. She lost 35, uh, uh, a cousin do it. He did well. Uh, my aunt did it. She lost 60. My mother lost over a hundred pounds herself in her seventies. That was more recently. Um, but I, I have this wonderful tool now that I can use to help people, and, and that's what I do professionally. I don't practice chiropractic anymore. Uh, weight loss is my entry into the health field. It's how, I, it's how I help people achieve their goals. That's awesome. So let's, let's talk about this tool that you're bringing to the world. Uh, sure. Uh, I, I mean, I think the best way to talk about it is, is um, you know, to draw a distinction between what's happening out there and then what we do and what we want to accomplish because most of the time the weight loss has been separate from actual health achievement okay. and i think that's a that's to our detriment and if you think about all the desperate unhealthy ways that people try to lose weight it's everything from starvation to uh surgeries uh that that bypass the digestive tract uh, to uh drugs I mean, you know, it's a very important topic for people. It's emotionally charged. People desperately want to lose weight, and they don't know how. Right. And they do things that ultimately make them less healthy, actually slow down the metabolism to make them more prone to gaining the weight back and more, and they end up in a worse situation and become even more discouraged and frustrated and apathetic, and they don't even want to try anymore. So our philosophy is you have to make the body healthier. Uh, it's not about weight loss per se. It's about fat loss and health attainment, right? Weight is yeah, not our so. enemy. Weight is uh, the exertion of a force upon the earth, essentially. It, it has nothing to do with our health. Every linebacker in the NFL is overweight, and yet they're all ripped. Yes. You can see their abdominal muscles. Mm-hmm. So we have to burn fat, which means we have to make the body work more efficiently. If we liken it to an engine, if the engine is not working then the car is just not going to go regardless so that's ultimately what we're doing we have a variety of ways that we do that but just a couple of examples is this people don't know for example that if they're in a state of chronic inflammation that that will change their hormones and slow down their metabolism and lead to weight gain uh, people don't know that if they're not properly hydrated, if they don't have the nutrients, they can't create the energy to burn the fat. So we want to address all of these things in addition to providing good coaching, uh, which we do generally with daily texting, to help a person along through the journey. So that's our approach, and that's why we get such great results. So that's where you, you really talk about taking control of your health. You're really not saying... Um, Weight loss is a byproduct of taking control, correct? Yeah, and I love how you put that, and now this is going to become fun because now we're going to talk about some subversive things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're in a time period where we've had the opportunity to reflect. Sure. And my fear, my concern about this time period, Michael, is that 
the conclusion that people are going to come to is not the conclusion that, hey, we have to take more responsibility for our health. We have to take control of it. We have to make sure we're not one of the quote unquote vulnerable or susceptible population Mm -hmm. by building up our own immunity. My concern is that the is that the conclusion that people are going to come to is that we have to avoid people, we have to avoid life until such time as they create some kind of a medication or vaccine that's going to save us. Mm-hmm. And so, so we're going to go to a state of, of relatively low responsibility, which I think is going on with, with individuals in general and specifically with their health, right? Because we tend to listen to whatever anyone in a white coat says as if it's, gospel yes to a state of even lower responsibility for our health and i think that's a damn shame if that's what happens well let, let's hope that it is not going in that direction and, and what can we do what can we do differently so what could we as individuals do differently sure. or what could we as providers do well I'll, let's 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 say both. What can we do as providers, number one, and then help people see that they actually have to accept responsibility for their own health. So what can we yeah, do? Yeah, I, I, You know what? I think in both, both cases, just from different directions, it starts with understanding. Okay. Right? So, so now you know this, right? Because, I, I, you know, you've done, I'm, I'm assuming you've done lectures in your practice and you've spoken to hundreds of people, health providers, lay people, etc., and it's a, always a very interesting thing when you say to somebody, okay, you know, you'd say you want to achieve health, but what is health? How do you define it? Mm-hmm. And, and tell me if I'm wrong. More people than not will say it's the absence of symptoms. Absolutely. When you feel good, right? Yeah. Yep. And you and I know, and the dictionary knows, that that is not the definition of health. Correct. The definition of health is function. It's when our bodily systems are functioning correctly. Or as uh, I think Webster say, a condition of wholeness. Yes. Um, and not just the absence of disease or infirmity. So people have to understand that the suppression of symptoms is not the same as the achievement of health. Taking medications so you don't feel bad has nothing to do with building health. And in fact, over a long time, it'll take a person further away from health. So I think that's where it starts. I think everyone has to have those fundamental understandings about just what health is. Otherwise, you know, there are a lot of people out there with a lot of knowledge. They know a lot of facts, but with no understanding. Yeah, we and I and I don't want to. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. No, we 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 thought that it was it the reason why things are, were the way they were is because we weren't um, getting the information out to people. And that's proven not to be true because we're living in an age where information is readily available. You don't have to go to the library yep. and do research. You can literally go on your computer and look up anything in the world. So it is not an right. information problem. Right. So go ahead, Right. It's a wisdom problem. Yes, it's a it's a it's an understanding problem. You know, it, now we, we've gone to a point where there's too much information. Mm-hmm. So it's not good if there's too little information, if there's too much information is overwhelmed. If there's too much, you tend to rely on the quote unquote experts. Right. Well, I, I got to tell you something. Most of the experts have never studied health. Most of the expert most of the experts would flunk that test. Yes. What is health? Mm-hmm. And and I don't think just as a matter of just as a matter of fact and not as a matter of judgment i don't think you can call yourself a health professional if all you've ever studied is pathology and this would make me very unpopular and i have a dear friend who's an md and i and i said that and she she was up so she she got it she understood it she's a little different in her orientation uh but that would make a lot of people very upset. Mm-hmm. And they would say, well, who the hell is this guy to, to tell me I'm not a health professional? I mean, look at my license. It says I'm a health professional. Well, okay, good. Tell me something about health. How does one achieve health w- without medications? What if someone came to you as an MD and you examined them and everything was in the correct parameters, their blood pressure, their, you know, all their blood work, and you, know, you said nothing's wrong, and they said, good. Okay, I want to achieve health. Help me. What do you have for them? 
You know, how do you create, how do you, how can you assist the body in, in self-healing and in self-regulating on an even higher level than it already does? These are questions that, that we ask. These are yes. questions that crazy holistic hippies ask. But the powers that be don't. It is, I, I, I say this often, but it, it, for those of us in the health and wellness arena, we ourselves have a story to tell. And most of us have overcome an obstacle Right. To, and and it's just where we could have kept it to ourselves, but it's such a it, it's primordial where we want to belong to something bigger than ourselves, and we want to share it with the world. So here you 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 could have gone about your business, David, and said, "My God, people are like you look amazing, you're fantastic, you look healthy, you're functioning, you're doing this," and you could have kept it to yourself. But being who you are, there was a greater calling for you. And now you're sharing this with the world. Yeah. And, and, and isn't that funny, Michael? I, I don't think either of us set out to be evangelicals. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no. But, that's, but that's, where we, that's where we find ourselves. I, I mean, I, I think this knowledge is sorely needed. Hey, you know, science being what it is, there might come a time where we can just plug into some machine and it'll heal every, any, everything. And we won't have to worry about it. We won't have to take responsibility. We could eat whatever we want. We could do whatever we want. But we're not there. I mean, right now, we're, you know, we have you know, thousands of years of, of human evolution. Uh, and, and the one thing that we know for certain is that the body is a self-healing, self-regulating organism. Yep. Uh, you know, it needs... It generally, it needs no help. It just needs no interference. Um, and, and given today's world, how toxic it is, uh, the accumulation of all the stressors, physical, chemical, emotional, what's happened is that the outside world has come inside. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's moved things out of balance. And people like you and I exist not only to preach about restoring balance and not only to help execute it but to give people an understanding so these words are not meaningless uh you know when we when we say things like health and health has a definition the definition is function when we say things like balance there's a practical application to that the body is healthy and exists within just certain narrow parameters sure whether it's ph or temperature um, and, and we can just assist in, in bringing about the right conditions so the body can express health. And, and that's where we come into play. I know, Michael, listen, you and I are similar. I mean, we're, we're, we went to the same chiropractic school. We both lost over 100 pounds. We're both preaching this gospel. <laughs> how, do you, how do you put it to people? How do you help people so that they can, for lack of a better phrase, see the light? I... My, you know, it's funny, David, after practicing for 20 and, and still an active practice, but practicing for 21 years, 90, 97, 23 years, I, I first and foremost, just sit and listen. I want to know mm. what your story is. I want to make that connection so that you know right. I'm listening to you. And then what I look for is what are and, and this is, you know, this is way beyond our, our 50, uh, 40, 50 minutes that we're going to talk. But I look for where your values are. So if mm -hmm. you come in and say, hey, Dr. Mike, um, I hurt my back. I can't lift my grandkids. I can't go golfing. Um, I can't uh, be with my wife. I mean, these are your values. You're telling me these things. And the, this is what's important to you. Um, and. That's the number one thing that I do in my practice. I, I think I do it fairly well. Um, I always am open to learning more, but I, I need to meet, when a patient comes in, I need to meet them where they are and, right. and wait for the opportunity for me to help them. We're partnering together in their health, in their well-being. And it's usually got the funny part, David, is it's usually a guy will come in and let's say uh, John Q. Public, he's like 300 pounds. 
And John says, I threw my back out lifting up uh, the mail. I'm like, dude, what did you get in the mail that was so heavy? He's like, what? I was like, well, you, you don't have a back problem. You've got a health problem. And right. I want to help you. I want to partner with you in getting healthy. So that's usually right. how we how we do things in our office, but it, it's yeah. probably very similar to what you're what you're saying. Well, it, it is, and and look at me violating that right now, just getting on on a soapbox and preaching, and <laughs> and not necessarily respecting where people are. So uh, that's probably because that's where I am right now, right? I mean, I I need to express that. I need for people to know these things. But you're right. It's one of the things we're going against is is a person's accumulated understanding, right or wrong, that that happened, you know, from the time they were born. Absolutely. There is a certain larger culture out there, and it is suggesting certain things about what health is and how to achieve it. And if I come at a person in the wrong way which is I think part of what you're saying is that they they're going to reject what I have to say because it's it's just different it's not part of their reality. Yeah, it's funny David if you know they they've they've been fed all this information and their glass is really full. And right. we've got to do something to help unfill that glass with that stuff so that what we're saying which is which is really the truth about health that it has an opportunity to sink in a little bit so what what do you mm -hmm. do like when you you wrote something um and, and a touch point that i really wanted to hit on because i've never seen it written that way and it just struck a, a chord with me which i really love you, you so, mean i use i use poor grammar is that what you're saying <laughs> no 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 quite the opposite okay quite the opposite <laughs> um what, how do you go about finding joy in the creation of health? Because I've never seen that written before anywhere, and I love how that I love how that feels to me. So, what do you do about finding joy in the creation of health? Uh, yeah, so this is also an awesome question, and it goes back to kind of the the basis of of how we operate. Okay. And how we've learned to operate and I, I think the problem is this is we're talking about you know taking responsibility and we're talking about creating health we have to understand health is not an event health is a journey and it requires essentially surrendering surrendering to that journey um, accepting it as a journey and what I mean by that is this is that more often than not when a person comes to see us, it's to handle an immediate problem. Mm -hmm. When a person comes to see me, they're unhappy, they're miserable about their weight, it's affecting their health, it's affecting their quality of life. They just, they want to lose the weight. They want it as fast as possible. There's no joy in the process. In fact, there's resentment. They have to do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm going to put some constraints on their freedoms, on their, on their enjoyments. And, and so they're doing it for not the, not the joy of doing it, not for the process. They're doing it solely for the goal. And I think that that's a strategy ultimately for failure. Because if they find that they go a couple of days and the scale doesn't move, it's very easy to get discouraged. Mm -hmm. Because they've never tried to find the joy of the process. And I'm not saying it's easy to find the joy of the process. Uh, I struggle with it myself. It's onerous to live a healthful lifestyle in our society. It is. Right? I mean, we, we have to buy the right food. We have to prepare it. We have to eat it. We have to say no to things. I mean, but if a person looks, if a person becomes aware of the, of of the process, of their resentments, of the things that they're fighting and how they're fighting and sabotaging themselves, I think it's possible to find, to find the joy in eating healthful food, in the, the feeling of lightness and, and, and breathing. And I think it's possible to do. I'm not saying it's easy. I, I don't promise anyone a rose garden, but, but that's the goal. Michael Jordan, 
Michael Jordan wanted to win more than anyone else, but he was fully process oriented. He loved the whole thing. You know, he loved just the competition for the competition. And the best ones always do that. And that's what we're, we're trying to help people with when we can. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, the interesting thing is, and, and I heard it on, um, I heard it on Tim Ferriss's podcast when we set a goal the 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 goal is not the object the object is to become the person who achieves that goal right and and i heard that it's just like when when you when you wrote that down like there are certain times in our lives when we come into the when when something strikes a chord in us and when when you wrote that, it was very similar for me. It's like that's just brilliant way of looking at it. Finding joy in the creation of health, and right. you're right. It it is not easy, David. It is it is it's far from easy. We're bombarded by food uh, commercials, by billboards, by every everywhere we look, and and it's really really unhealthy stuff. So I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you. Well, I and I, I think what you said was very profound in that, you know, the, the glass is full, right? And it's full yeah. with, you know, misinformation mm -hmm. and, and, and things that were conditioned into us and all of that. And we, we have to empty it to some degree because in, in our hyper-competitive society, I, I think the joy of just doing things for the sake of doing them has been lost. We study to get to get a grade, mm -hmm. you know, to get into a better school, not to learn. Uh, you know, we, we, we resent having to study sometimes. You know, uh, we eat right and we exercise to lose weight, to look good. So it's always some a goal that's outside of us. It's always something extrinsic. And, and again, if we can just find a way to make it more about the process and more about that journey, the results will come. And that takes faith. And this is another non-scientific, you know, uh, religious concept. Um, but I remember once I went to a dojo mm -hmm. uh, and there was, a, there was a sign on the wall. And I, and I haven't been able to find this yet again. I've, I've kind of looked for it online. But it said something to the effect of... Training is primarily a matter of faith. You have to know that when you do the right actions and you do them repetitively, that it's going to lead to improvement. And I, I thought that was really well put. It struck me in the, in the way that you were saying you yep. know, that Ferris's quote and what I said struck you. I think that's really well done. And, and this is a process. I guess... Um, you know, is there is there a way? I mean, is that something that you try to create with your clients? And what have you found that's been successful in it? Because this is, you know, this is our journey also, right? We keep trying to find better ways to accomplish the same goals. Well, it's great, great, great question. And yes, so with myself, I am a voracious reader. I have I literally read. Um, or listen to thousands of books. And what I chose to do was that I would, in the very beginning, when I first started my weight loss and getting healthier, and really it was to get healthier. The, the objective was to be an active participant in my children's lives. This started when they were born, mm. when they were seven, they're now Emma's 17 and Jack is 16. And I bought a used elliptical machine and I would not allow myself to read unless I was on the elliptical trainer. And I have logged thousands upon thousands, tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of steps on that elliptical trainer. Now, I've taken that a, a step further in um, my values are health, family, education, both teaching and learning um, and, and uh, financial abundance. I have taken that a step further in I do a lot, a, a lot of walking these days, but I do not walk unless I am listening to a podcast, a class, a journal, journaling something. 
I make sure I tie my values into what's important for me. Mm -hmm. So that's where I, I've taken that, that faith. I know, I know that if I put the time in, I'm going to find joy in getting healthier because it, it, it sits with my values. It is, it is congruent. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Wow. You know, the, the, that's, so important, right? I mean, when do we feel really bad? It's when we fail ourselves. Mm -hmm. When we do something that, that's incongruent. I, th I think that's really, you know, if you can combine that with the understanding that you're imperfect, right? Because how many of us go down, you know, this guilt spiral, right? We, 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 we want to eat healthy. It's important to us. We're doing it not only for ourselves, but we're doing it to become better people. We're doing it for our families. Uh, to live long, fulfilling lives, and then we find ourselves out and we eat something that we know we're not supposed to. Now, all of a sudden, there's this, you know, self-critical guilt spiral that we descend down and and we want to give up. And the next day, it's easier, you know, I, well, I already screwed up. Well, why, why don't I keep going? So I think if we can combine that, you know, the, the being congruent, Mm -hmm. Without forcing it, with the with the wanting to, there's the power of choice inherent in that. Yes. Uh, with with being kind to ourselves, I think there we have a pretty good formula. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Oh, absolutely. So talk to me. Um, talk to me about some of the barriers that you see to weight loss and and really how to how to overcome them. I think we just started mm. to touch on this, but talk to me about that. Well, you know, now, so now we're getting into this thing that I created called the thin test. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of the thin test is to, is to help raise people's awareness about what their barriers are. It turns out that the barriers are pretty finite. There's not an infinite number of barriers. Um, and they, they come down to just a, just a few things, right? I mean, there are environmental factors that could get in our way. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a spouse who tends to sabotage or you uh, have a family that's all about eating, uh, you know, there are, uh, there's understanding. If you don't have the right understanding, uh, you know, if you think in an extreme example that potato chips are the way to get healthy and lose weight, you know, then you're, you're off from the very outset. There's physiological factors. Obviously, we need a, a, a functioning metabolism. Um, you know, there's the ability to accept help from others. Believe it or not, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, to, to be humble enough to just know that we don't know it all and some expert help is a good thing. So uh, that's what this test does. It's able to help a person identify their barriers because here's the, here's the thing that we have to understand. It's just like in an organization. Let's say there's an organization that has a great, sales force and they have, you know, fantastic marketing uh, and they're very sound financially, but their ability to deliver the product is poor, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're sure. looking at a bar graph, all of these things are high. They're on an eight or nine out of 10. And then their ability to deliver what they promise is poor. It's at a two. Mm -hmm. Well, the organization could rise no higher than that lowest point it will drag down just like an anchor. Sure. And it's the same thing with people. If, if you have the right understanding and you're motivated and you have all of those other factors going for you, but physiologically your metabolism is just off, it's just broken, well, you can't rise higher than that. And those are the people who cry to us, sure. who say, I've done everything, I do everything right, and I can't lose weight. Or conversely, if, if you if your metabolism is fine, but you're a uh, you know and you're and you're motivated, but you know you have a poor understanding, then you can't rise higher than that poor understanding. I mean, how many people say to you, "Doc, I eat so healthy," and then they tell you what they eat, and it's not so healthy. It is not so healthy. Uh -oh. <laughs> so so that's the idea of this to find out what the biggest barriers are, and then to be able to create, and a person could do it with our help, a person uh, hopefully could do it on their own, but to be able to come up with strategies to overcome those weakest links. And and if a person can do that, then they have a chance. Yes. <laughs> they have Absolutely. a chance to succeed. Absolutely. Um, where, 
is the fin test available for public? Is there is there a website for that? Yeah, well, the, it's my website. It's fintech weight loss. Okay. Fintech-weightloss.com, and if you go there, there's a link uh, to the fin test. There's no charge for doing it. Uh, you know, a person could do it, and it, you know, they'll they'll get the the printout of it. Uh, and then at that point, it's up to them. They could they could look for themselves, or they can give us a call, and, and you know we'll be happy to have a conversation. Awesome. I will put that in the show note, folks, so that you can go on there and and take that test. That would be awesome. Thank you for that. So talk to me. Um, you 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 hit on a couple of the uh, finite factors in people not doing so well. So there's environmental, there's physiological, and there's ability to accept help from others. Did, did we cover them all? Well, well, no, there's a few more. There's uh, some motivation, understanding. Those are some other categories. Okay, okay cool. Uh, I, uh, for, for, for your sake, David, I take notes during all my interviews. I'm just trying, <laughs> to, ca- trying to catch up. Um, all right, so let's talk. There's, I, I'm very cognizant of your time. Um, I no, just, no, I'm cool. This is a, this is a, but don't forget, we're living in the quarantine time. <laughs> well, I have to be at work at three o'clock. I mean, I, <laughs> you, you and I both, you and I both. Uh, yeah. So how, how do we go about like finding hope after, after hardship? You know, it is, <laughs> oh, there's a, there's a big question, right? I mean, yeah. listen, we were, we were talking about the fact that everything's kind of a game yeah. and inherent in, in the game of life is hardship. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and sometimes we're, we think that we're immune from that, that it's not going to happen, but it happens to everybody. Nobody gets out alive. Nobody gets out, uh, without any travail. So, the question is, and again, it's going to be cliche, but if we can get more into the mechanisms, then we can give people something that they can apply, is is not how many times you fall, but it's how many times you get up. Absolutely. From what I've seen personally and with, with other people is it's it's not always easy to get up. Sometimes you, there's, a, there's just a timeout. You know, some people just have the ability to just bounce up every time they go down. And sometimes people uh, are so wounded, I guess, um, Mm -hmm. you know, metaphorically, that it's just hard to get up. Uh, I think at those times, um, it's it's good to just get outside and walk. You were talking about walking. Mm -hmm. I encourage everyone to do that, especially now to look out at the environment, to see that it's not as scary as maybe we built it up, Uh, to see that there are good things. There are birds chirping and there there are, you know, there's a breeze going through the the leaves. Mm -hmm. Uh, In other words, to get out of our own heads. I I think that's where it starts. There was a funny thing someone said years ago, and it's uh, a play on on a cliched expression, which is a mind is a terrible thing to have. (laughs) <laughs> uh, and and I and I think that's true. Sometimes our attention gets so introverted, right? We're looking inside at our own worries and problems, and it's so hard to disengage from that. And and the first step, as a first step, if you could just pull yourself off the couch, get outside, and look out at things, then and and be patient with yourself. Ultimately, you start actually seeing those things, right? Your attention goes from the worries to the world which is where it should be you know that's that's where the game is played so i i think that that's a good step and i think there's a couple of things so this gets into something we haven't discussed which is the elephant in the room now which is this crazy ass world we're living in yes (laughs) i've been begging people since the beginning of this um, my clients, I've been making videos. We actually started a Facebook group to help people through this time. It's called the Coronation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've been begging people to do two things. One, ignore the news. Amen. Ignore the news. <laughs> Amen. It doesn't matter how strong a person is mentally. When you're inundated with that kind of negativity, 
it's really hard, you know, to be strong. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the first thing. And the second thing is to get out and walk daily and look at look at the environment because we've been led to believe that we are in a really really dangerous environment. Mm -hmm. And and when a person is in a dangerous environment or they conceive themselves to be, there's only a couple of strategies. One is to be angry and to hit out, mm -hmm. and we've seen evidence of that, right, of yep. late. Yep. And another is to go into a fetal position. Yep. And one of my concerns now, and the, and the reason if I could express a, a, something that really pissed me off. Sure. Is the, there was a, a medical expert, considered the expert of experts these days. And he suggested that the answer going forward, forget about even this time period, right? Is that this is not an isolated time. He said the answer going forward is to wash our hands obsessively and to never shake anybody's hand ever again, <laughs> right? I was so incensed by that because what he was doing is, is essentially is, is throwing out all context and saying that we have to avoid people, we have to avoid the environment. He was spreading fear more than he was spreading a message of hope and of strength from within. This right. guy, by the way, is an immunologist, right? So theoretically, he studied the human immune system, which is mm -hmm. what needs to be built up now so we're not susceptible. And he was saying, well, we have to avoid everything. Presumably, we can't make love anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, dancing, I can only imagine this guy. He's, he's Italian. I can only imagine him at an Italian wedding, right, sitting in the corner while everyone else is doing the tarantella and hugging and kissing each other. <laughs> I mean, that is not a world that we want to live in. It is not. It is not. <laughs> it's avoidance, right? Absolutely. So, again, I'm on my soapbox. <laughs> uh, and I lost my point, frankly. So I, I, if you could help me out, I'd appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> but the, the two things, ignore the news and get out and, and walk daily. Thank you. But, but the one thing, <laughs> uh, here, here's something I heard. Um, one, of my, one of my distance mentors and, uh, quite frankly, somebody who helped me lose the weight was, is Rob Wolf. He's been on the podcast multiple times. Mm -hmm. Um, but here's a scary here's a scary thought. Babies that were born during this period that are in the ICU or the NICU, they've not seen a human face. Mm. And this is a scary, scary proposition wow. for yeah. for this generation where we know right. we know our science has shown that that human beings need to see the face of their mother they haven't even seen their mother right. they've only right. seen the nurses covered head to toe this is really right this is really sad and mm -hmm. if we listen and they need touch and they need and affection. touch and affection right. and and they're getting none of this it's time you know, I, I don't want to get on my soapbox, <laughs> but I, I agree with it's, you. It's everything funny. you said, David, everything. Um, ignore the news and get out and walk. Get out right. and enjoy nature. And everything to me seems more vibrant. When I look at nature now, I think it's just a greater appreciation um, for nature. I live, I live at the beach. I work in, I work in the city. Um, I've started at lunchtime. I go for a walk on the brand new Bayonne bridge, which is a walkway that's 12 feet wide. And every day there's 40 to 50 people up there. Um, and I get right. the, the most remarkable views of, of New York City and Staten Island and, and Bayonne, and I get out and I walk. I walk uh, the dog every night. We walk for an hour. We walk on the beach. We walk in the water. We do all these things, and there's there's just the world, they, them, out there, the, the news people, they want you to think that the world's a big, scary place. Yeah, and and when and again, I'm not sure, and I, I certainly have those thoughts, and I'm not sure what their intentions are, and 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 they're probably not monolithic. I just know in practice 
that that is what can happen. Nothing, nothing else can happen. Uh, you know, so so we do have to now. Now, this is interesting also because this is not an easy task. I've had this conversation with many people. Like I, I used the words before, I've begged people to to stop watching the news because it's hard to disengage. And I think that's for two reasons. One of them is is just a misunderstanding about the fact that, well, you need to be informed. Mm-hmm. Now, nobody needs to be informed to that level. And, and and I even challenged someone. I said, I guarantee you, if you're watching a particular news program and you turn it off and then in two weeks you turn it back on, they're going to be on the same set. <laughs> Very true. Very true. <laughs> And then, yeah. the, and then the other thing is something emotional. I think there's this emotional thing. It's like the you know the car wreck thing. Yeah, it's like you have to look, and you can't. And and people can't pull themselves away. It takes it takes strength. It takes discipline. You know, you don't have. You're going to hear it anyway. You're going to hear it from your mother. You're going to hear it from you know all your obnoxious cousins, and yeah. uh, it's going to come up on your news feeds. But <laughs> but get away. Um, and, and walk and look at things. And then the, I, I think the third strategy uh, is is try to reframe this time period, uh, right? Because, great, yes, yes it, it, it's a nightmare, but there's so much opportunity Yes. now. You know, uh, learn learn a language. Uh, <laughs> clean out your garage. I mean, there's so and, and people have been doing this. They've been doing this innately without being encouraged to. Some people have. Um, but but use it as an opportunity to be stronger on the other side. But don't hold your breath now. I don't think people should hold their breath at any times. I think I think life should still be lived. Um, and I'm personally not at the point of civil disobedience yet. This is the plan that we've been given. It makes sense from a from a, you know per certain perspectives. Um, but it it has to be contextual. Uh, I personally, you know. I cannot live avoiding people and avoiding life, or at least I don't want to. And uh, and I don't think anybody can. I, I agree with you. Um, I agree with you. Well, David, I really appreciate you taking the time to be on the show and, and share with the world. Um, is there any parting words you have for our audience? <laughs> parting words. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like parting gifts. That's it. Um, I think I said most of what I needed to say. I mean, I, I the last parting word I, I would say is is this: we've had the opportunity to, I think, appreciate uh, things more than we have in the past. Um, you know, the fact that we haven't seen people makes us long to see them. Right? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Mm-hmm. Um, and but the other thing that's needed now is as the world gets further and further apart and communication is done over, you know, uh, technological platforms, uh, by not seeing people, by not having that direct communication, it seems like we have more license to act in a way that's less than kind. Mm. And, I, and I think that, you know, given the, given the distance, right, social distance, Mm-hmm. which is an oxymoron if I've ever heard one. <laughs> uh, but 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 given that distance and the and the anonymity that technology affords us um, and you know and the schisms that apparently exist in society, I think civility and kindness, and by the way, anybody who I grew up with, if they heard me talking like this, <laughs> they would say this dude is full of crap because we know him. <laughs> but uh, but and and we're from New Jersey, right? But yeah. I think I think those things now are so massively important. Uh, society could rip apart at the seams. Um, we, you know, if if you look at the factors, if you take a group of people who are used to, to socially interacting, who are used to having an income, uh, and and you separate them, and you take away the ability to have an income, and you uh, replace that with fear, mm-hmm. then really bad things can happen. Uh, and that's that's been a concern of mine. And uh, the good news, though, is we do have choice. And the choice is to, to be kinder, to be more civil, to accomplish more, um, to get some things done that we wouldn't get done otherwise, to get out, to look at the environment, to smell the air. 
uh, these things will will improve things, and there is a choice. So that's I guess those are my parting words. I love it. I love it. Hey, David, it was really great having you on the show, um, folks. If you like what you heard, please go to Apple Podcasts, leave a review. It helps us to help others find the work we're doing and have great guests like Dr. David Rendelstein on the show and the work that he's doing. So I'd really appreciate a five-star review. Um, Folks, everything that we talked about will be in the show notes. Uh, Please go over to uh, fintech-weightloss.com and take the thin test. Uh, That will be in the show notes as well. David, thanks again. We'll talk to you soon. Ciao, everybody. Thank you, Michael. So here's some more specifics. Our August supplement of the month is vitamin C boost. It is a blend of vitamin C, both as ascorbic acid and in the natural food source, the acerola cherry. Vitamin C is crucial for immune function and collagen production. It can help you sleep by lowering cortisol at night and is particularly important for cigarette smokers. We've added in grapeseed extract, glutathione, and zinc to truly make this a -a one-of-a-kind vitamin C supplement. For the entire month of August, if you use the code lowercase B-O-O-S-T-10, BOOST10, you will receive 10% off this incredible new formulation. You can pick it up at our website at www.beyondyourwildestgenes.com, or if you're local, you can pick it up at the office, just mention the code. The August book of the month is The Serpent and the Butterfly, The Seven Laws of Healing by Dr. Ben Reeves. This is a really profound, easy book to read. You can listen to Dr. Mike interview Dr. Ben on the July 20th BYWG podcast. Our highlighted program for August is from our friend, soul-inspired girl, Dr. Laura Foster. The program is called Reclaim Your Voice, and the 15% discount code for our listeners is capital BYWG. Reclaim Your Voice is a 21-day online series for women who seek to speak their absolute truth with more confidence, courage, and conviction. The program begins August 10th. The link will be in the podcast show notes and weekly emails. Included will also be an invitation for female listeners to join the private Facebook group called Soul Inspired Girl, a space for heart-led women. And mind you, girl is not spelt with an I, it's spelt with a U. Thanks for listening, and as always, be awesome and never unawesome.